Hello, world. This panel is entitled Solving Abundance for Humanity. The questions that we asked are, is there hope to achieve a I've got some world changers representing multiple countries here with me. First, we've got Monique Justice. She is the co-founder of King and Justice. She is also my wife. We've got Terry Hawkins, founder and CEO of Ignite Worldwide. We've got Norm Harshaw, CEO of King and Justice Abundance Day. We've got Kit Jr., founder and CEO and designer at Ohm Beads. And then we've got Jeff Badu, founder and CEO of Badu Enterprises. Welcome, everyone. We've been through a lot together as a world. We wanted to call this Solving Abundance for Humanity because COVID-19 has been something that has impacted all of us. And there's gifts in every adversity. And the gift is we together as humanity have a shared experience. Instead of just talking about the negative, we wanted to offer up a solution today. And that says one mind, what we want to accomplish, what we're committed to accomplishing together, right? The news is negative. I think we can all agree with that. In recent times, it seems more negative than ever. And with our digital devices, we have constant access to negative news. And what happens is that there's a, an increase in pessimism individually and collectively. What happens is we begin to think that the world is getting worse. But maybe that's not the case. Perhaps it's a distortion. Over the past century, we as people have made unbelievable progress. The rate of progress is so great that we literally have the potential to create an abundant world, to solve abundance for humanity. Every child, every citizen, every CEO, every company, every city, every country, every civilization in and throughout the cosmos because we're destined to be a multi-planetary species. We have what it takes to solve abundance inside of the next 20 to 40 years. It has less to do with scarcity and more to do with accessibility. We have our problems. We're not saying that we don't have problems such as COVID-19. How many millions died from this horrific, horrific thing? 400 plus businesses, 400,000 plus businesses in America alone have failed, have gone out of business. So there is a lot of negative news. We're not oblivious. We're not ignoring these things. We could talk about conversation after conversation that we've had with business owners and leaders all over the world, and especially in America, how, how COVID-19 has impacted them. But the truth is we as people, we as humanity, we ultimately overcome. We ultimately solve the problems that are in front of us, including COVID-19. We've been through some dark times together recently, but look what's happening now. Our lifespan across the world has doubled over the last century, double than what it used to be. The average per capita income, I'm making a case for abundance here. So you believe that abundance is our future. The average per capita income is three times more than what it used to be. And that's adjusted for inflation. This is globally, folks. 
Childhood mortality has come down by a factor of 10. Electricity, food is 10 times cheaper. Electricity is 20 times cheaper. Transportation is 100 times cheaper. Communications is 1,000 times cheaper. We live in the most peaceful time, really the most abundant time in history. Global literacy has gone from 25% to over 80%. We're truly living in the most amazing times. We're ushering in a new abundance era. With all the negative today, again, we wanted to come together and be positive, not negative. We wanted to not talk about our problems, but offer a solution We wanted to offer a solution that is not just applicable in America, but in every country in the world. I've lived and worked across 60 countries. My wife and I just got done with a world tour during COVID across eight countries and 40 cities this time. We're familiar with the world. We want to offer a solution today. Pay attention, please, for the world. It's applicable to every child because the children are our future leaders. It's applicable, again, to to every citizen in the world, no matter who you are, where you are. It's applicable to every CEO or leader at the helm of every organization and every organizational type. It's applicable to every company and organization It's applicable in every city. It's applicable again in every country and every civilization in the cosmos. So today we'd like to share nine essential elements to solving abundance for humanity. We're going to start with Monique Justice. Monique Justice. Can you speak about exact purpose? Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Rick. You know, the most important piece about solving abundance for humanity is finding your exact purpose. And in order to solve abundance for humanity, you have to know who you are. It's the master key to to having an abundant economy. So a lot of people talk about exact purpose and how important it is. But truly the thing that has been missing is a process and a formula. And I am so grateful that we know that process and that formula to know your exact purpose. Uh, Without exact purpose, you cannot realize your abundance potential. So how can you have an abundant economy if you don't realize your own abundance potential? And it reveals who you are. This is applicable, as Rick said, to children, to see, to citizens, to CEOs, to companies, to countries, and as he said, even the cosmos. There's no other way to fully express and realize your full potential. You have to know your exact purpose. And I'm grateful that we have a process for that. But most importantly, you have to know that there is an identity crisis out there right now. And once this identity crisis is solved, then vision is solved, then mission is solved. Exact purpose gives you the right vision for you. And that's how everybody can contribute. And that's how everybody can come together. It reveals the absolute best path for you to get from here to there. You can't even begin to create a truly abundant economy if you don't have that revealed to you. And that's a really big critical distinction. So clarity is the preoccupation of of abundant leaders. It's critical that you know that. Abundance for humanity starts and ends with exact purpose. And as a co-founder and CEO of King and Justice, we have worked around the world, and there's a critical distinction between those leaders who know their exact purpose and those who don't. Look at the organizations. It's in your life and in your organization. So to create an abundant economy, we must start with who and not why. So once you know the who, you will know the what and the how. Exact purpose is the who. 
a purpose-centered, purpose-aligned, and purpose-powered route from here to there. That's really the key. So many people are just not taking that seriously enough or taking the time to even discover their exact purpose. You have to know that. Purpose is who you are, therefore where you are. Vision is what you want, therefore what, where you want to go. Mission is how you get from here to there. So there's a critical distinction from that, but exact purpose all starts from there. And then you can truly start to have it an abundant economy. Love it. So I have a question for you. Can you discover your why, what we call the abundance game, without exact purpose? You won't you will not be intentional with it. You have to know your exact purpose. To know there's a critical distinction of knowing your why. It goes from purpose, mission, and vision. Those go together. It doesn't start with the why. It starts with the who. And so many people can have a similar why, but that's not who you are. And that's not the essence and the alignment of where you need to be starting from. That's powerful. Jeff Badu, can you speak to us about grand challenges? Yeah. So, I mean, overall, when it comes to um, grand challenges, they are basically the challenges of the world. Um, so, for example, scarcity mindset, that's a big challenge in the world. And really what we have to do is, like Monique was saying, we first of all have to know our purpose, you know, where my purpose is to inspire and support the super hungry to take hold of infinite resources in order to create an abundant lifestyle. So at the very, very end of that sentence is a grand challenge in itself, abundant lifestyle. Most people in the world, unfortunately, I think in scarcity mindset. Um, and so, you know, part of my purpose is to help them find those infinite resources in order to create the abundant lifestyle. So in a nutshell, the grand challenge is simply problems that we have or not so simply problems that we have in the world, such as scarcity mindset, um, just people being unaware of infinite resources that do exist on the planet. And overall, just not, you know, just not taking advantage of um, certain things that we have. But in order to fix a grand challenge, and there's not just one grand challenge, there's grand challenges. And I'm helping, you know, with those grand challenges. We need grand solutions. I love it. So you talk about infinite resources. Do you believe we have the resources already to solve every grand challenge? I mean, we have more than enough. It can go all the way back, all the way back to the good book. And, you know, when the earth was created, we have plenty, plenty of resources that were given to us. And we can do anything that we truly desire to do if we just embrace it, take a moment, take a deep breath, right, meditate over it, and then go out and actually hunt for those resources. Got it. Do you believe that technology is a resource liberating force? Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, without tech, I mean, tech has revolutionized the world, basically. And the way we do everything, the way we wake up, you know, to alarms, um, the way we, <clears throat> you know, the way we work out with some of the apps that help keep track of our heart rate and, you know, um, you know, a lot of the things that we have. So just like today, we're doing an event virtually about what 50 years ago. We couldn't. There's no way we could have done such a thing. We all had to meet in person. Imagine in the COVID-19 world. We have to shake hands and, and everything like that. So overall, technology has definitely made the world, I think it's made life easier for, for most. But unfortunately, those who don't really embrace the abundance mindset have said that technology has made their lives harder. I'm still having a hard time wrapping my head around. Wow. We've got uh, the passion of the DIY value creators, the capital of investors and philanthropists. But one of the most exciting, I think, is the three billion new minds coming online. How do you think these three billion plus new minds 
you know, coming online, how is that going to impact the grand challenges uh, that we're, we're solving together? I mean, it's, I think anything with life is, it's not really about the fact that we have infinite resources or not. It's a matter of what are we doing with those resources? So with technology, I mean, we haven't even seen 10% of what technology can do, in my opinion. So I think we'll see some very, very crazy stuff in the future. Um, you know, I think cars will be flying sometime soon. Um, I don't think anybody will be driving their own car in the future. So with that, technology is only going to make life better. And honestly, only those who embrace it will get better, right? Or will actually continue to live, to be quite frank. And those who don't embrace it stay stuck in the scarcity, you know, the scarcity mindset. They're going to fall behind. And unfortunately, they might go to the grave, you know, because the fact that these resources are given to us, such as technology, for us to be able to do more with it. You know, um, we were when we we're given resources, we we're meant to do more with those resources, not just say not just be ignorant to it and say, you know what, this is not for me. Right. I hear that sometimes like, hey, this computer is not for me. I'm like the computer was created for you to do stuff, to be more proactive. Um, so I think the world is only going to get better and only those who embrace it will survive. Wow. Thank you, Jeff. Kit, can you talk to us about grand solutions to these grand challenges? Number three. Hi, my name is Kitty Boone. I am a founder and CEO of OwnBeats. My purpose is giving, giving people an opportunity and helping them pursue their dream. Yes, the, I think to solve, one way to solve you know, an abundance for humanity is having the right mindset, an, an abundance mindset. And um, I think I'll, abundance to me, it really means like inner wealth or simply um, more than enough, okay? And, <clears throat> excuse me. And I think like uh, a lot of people think that they have to have more to be more abundant, right? And um, there's a saying, the more you give, the more you get, which encourages people to give more so that they can have more. And, but do we really need more to have an abundant life, right? And I think there's another saying, like the more you give, the less you need, which I found very interesting. And I thought about it and it really makes sense. Let me give you an example. Like when you um, donated something to Goodwill for, or any similar organization, you realize that how much junk you have around your house or in your garage and ultimately in your life, right? By just realizing that you had just created a more abundant life. How? Because now you need, you realize you need less stuff, right? And then that is more abundant life already. Right. So, yeah. So how can we have uh, the right mindset, mm. right? I think you have to practice, you have to practice. You have to practice. And I think Norm is having 12 practices to share with all of us, you know, so you can, so we all can practice to have a more abundant life. I love that. So then, perfect segue. Norm, can you talk to us about circular life or total abundance in life? Yes. Thank you, Rick. Thanks, Kit. Um, just to start out, my purpose, uh, we all have our purposes here. My purpose is to gently empower leaders to stay strong in who they are and become. So you're strong now, but you got to keep growing. And part of that growth is to have an abundant life. And next, I'm going to talk about an abundant organization because they do go together. Um, but if you are healthy in your life, your work will not be healthy. You'll still work, but it won't be healthy. It won't be abundant. Uh, you won't be a good leader. Um, so to solve abundance for humanity, we need a total well-being solution, and this solution has to be holistic. And so the 12 practices I want to share with you in life, um, not in any particular order, but here they are. And uh, you do these every day, but you aren't 
many times you aren't aware of them, but you do them every day. So we need to focus on them more. And um, first one is spiritual growth. Second one, personal transformation. Third one, emotional well-being. And those top three all kind of all go together. Um, also, love relationship. We all have a significant significant other. Uh, family. We all have family. Wouldn't be here without family. Work. We wouldn't be here without work either. We wouldn't be eating. We wouldn't be, wouldn't be on the Zoom call or the call right here. Um, fun and leisure. Friends and social circles. Physical health. Uh, giving. That's Kit's, Kit's word right there is giving. Financial abundance, which a lot of people think abundance just means financial. It's not. It's everything. It's all 12 of these. Uh, home environment. As we're working from home more and more, um, home environment becomes a lot more um, critical just to our, to our psyche. Um, and abundance just doesn't happen to you. You have to be intentional about it, have to surrender to it, and be open to receive it. Uh, by working in all 12, 12 of these areas. Um, we long to equip and empower men and women to find significance beyond success. The foundation of the solution is a circular life. We all want to be successful. We are. Um, but again, if you're only successful at work and not at home, it's not going to work. And we all know the people who have climbed up the corporate ladder, gotten to the top and looked down, no family left, no friends left. Um, no home, you know, so we're really about abundance and a, and a full circular solution in life. Love that. So what do you have to say to world leaders, you know, that are, you know, when it comes to total abundance, well-being, what do you have to say to world leaders when it comes, you know, when it takes, you know, they got to take care of their people. Mm-hmm. What do you have to say to people taking care of cities, whether it's the mayor or whoever's at the helm of a city? What do you have to say to the CEO or the executive team, the leaders at the helm of an organization when it comes to total abundance, well-being? It starts with the leader. It starts with you. You're healthy first. That keeps the company healthy, the the people under you healthy, the country healthy. Um, You're the example. If you as the world leader, as a CEO, are not healthy personally, um, your organization will not be healthy. And um, uh, you got to lead by example. Love it. Can you continue and talk to us about number five, circular org? We have, we love the number 12. Uh, We have 12 practices in life and 12 practices in the organization. And um, again, for total abundance solution for organizations, it's across every organizational type, Uh, the, the, the for profit, the nonprofit, the city, the government, the, the, um, the school, well, it doesn't matter what it is. These 12 practices, which I'll share you, with you in a minute, again, you do them in your company, you do them in your, um, your nonprofit, your profit every day, but you may not realize it. And when you don't realize you're doing something, it, it falls apart. It's like a flat tire on a, on a bike. Um, so the 12 are branding, which we've talked about purpose, um, leadership, strategy, communications, and team. Now, these are the people within your organization. Then we'll jump to processes, which is value creation, uh, advantage story, marketing, sales, customer experience, not customer service, customer experience. They're different. Uh, money, and then systems. Everything, everything revolves around the systems we have. So, again, to have an abundant, healthy organization, you have to do all 12 of these, even if you're, whether you're a startup, or a Fortune 50 company, you have to do all 12 of these and you have to do them well and you have to be aware of them. Um, and, as, and as an abundant leader, you only have to do these 12 well, not 12,000. We tend to get overwhelmed. Just do these 12 well and it simplifies everything. Um, an abundant economy has to be healthy and sustainable. And to get from here to there, here to there, your purpose, mission, and vision must be healthy, smart, fast, and consistent. Wow. Quick question for you. Are there an additional set of competencies required at each abundance inflection point? You're talking about these 12 things that you need to lead a full circle, Mm -hmm. but at each abundance inflection point, say 1 million, 3 million, 10 million, 30 million, 100 million, and so on. Well, and, and part of my purpose is to become 
you're never you're never done growing. So as an organization, if you stop, if you get stuck at one million, you have to learn how to get to three million. You have to learn how to get to ten. You have to learn how to get to a billion. And so each inflection point, you got to keep growing. Um, again, as a leader, as a CEO, and you have to keep your organization growing and healthy, and you have to keep teaching your people, those under you, those around you, how to to grow and become more. Mm. Love it. Thank you, Norm. Yeah. Terry, can you speak to us about Pocket of Genius number six? We can't hear you. If you can unmute yourself, no problem. That helps. You give me one job and I fail. And so <laughs> I would love to speak about the Pocket of Genius. Um you know, obviously with such brilliant architecture around a circular life and circular organisation and those 12 practices, we have such a powerful platform for creation. And a pocket of genius is the combination of purpose, which is cause. So that's where we have purpose, vision, mission, values. When we align that with position, which is the competency, and of course then um, performance, which is contribution. And once you align those three areas, purpose, position and performance, then you actually reach the pocket of genius. And I think a lot, what a lot of us, and yeah, I'm, you know, we're all hearing that everybody's got their exact purpose. The great thing is for me, especially um, being an educator, and I've actually delivered hundreds and hundreds of presentations and trainings around vision, mission, values, purpose, and it wasn't until I actually did my exact purpose day and, you know, I've been around the block a few times. Um, I, when I recently did it with King and Justice, it actually blew my mind. I didn't realise how off-centre I was when it came to knowing what purpose meant. So exact purpose is the driver. And when, as we said, when we align purpose, position and performance, it's like your engine room gets turned on internally and I think what's happened over time with businesses and leaders is that we've tried to externalize that we've it's been a force energy people think that when they find their purpose you know that that's going to tell them their career Um, and it might but it actually it's not an external thing like I said it's going to be we'll have burnout and so by understanding that the alignment of those three areas you will have a team, a community, a country of people who are operating from their own personal pocket of genius, which then contributes to the greater. So, Wow, thank you. One person in small teams driven by passion can do extraordinary things only governments and corporations could do in the past. Do you agree with that? Oh, totally. I, I think people are waking up to their own true power. I think we've always waited for someone else to guide and lead us. And, you know, when I think when the individual is ignited and, of course, you hear it at different people's um, purposes. But, and as Monique said, you know, we all have our different purpose and they can all be quite similar, but they're not, as Monique said. They're all so uniquely individual. But we've never focused on that. We've never started with the individual. We start with the company and this is what the company wants and this is what the government wants and we're all supposed to fall into alignment to that but nobody can become aligned to something externally unless they're aligned internally. And that is why I believe exact purpose um, is everything. Like I cannot begin to tell you. Mine is ignite the star, which is the pineal gland within, with unconditional love. Now you might hear that and go, what's that mean? But to me, it ignites everything I do and I just have to bring it back into centre. What, what do companies do? They force people into roles to fill a role rather than co-create people and have them actually just align to their perfect role within the organisation. That's when you get true, authentic contribution. Wow. I just see everyone raising their hands to contribute more. I love it. Oh, who, me contribute more? I love it. I love contributing. (laughs) Honestly, I just think that what you're talking about, the abundance for humanity is not just what we're, our limited thinking. You know, I think it is just the widest, uh, most broad and powerful way to operate where it comes back to that singular moment as a human or exploding out into our planet. 
Mm. If we all do our one little bit, I think it's going to be amazing. I love it. So again, we're sharing the nine essential elements to solving abundance for humanity. So number seven, joy. Jeff, can you talk about that, please? Yeah, I mean, joy is, I, to be honest, next to purpose. I think this is probably the most important one, in my opinion. Um, because if you don't have joy in something that you're doing, then you have no business doing it. You know, if you don't actually wake up, love what you're doing. Like if you don't want to wake up each morning and just do what it is that you want to do, then it's like, what's the point? You know, and a lot of people, I would say a majority of the people in the world have this where they have no joy. Um, so for me, that's what it's all about. If I'm not enjoying something that I'm doing, then what's the point? You know, and there are times in life where you have to do things you don't want to do. I'm not talking about those moments. Like maybe you have to go through school to get, you know, into your ultimate career. Um, and, you know, that one is kind of a gray area a bit because, for example, the Bill Gates of the world, right, who might have not necessarily finished college or something like that, and they still are where they are today. Um, so there's always a gray area. Somebody in my position as a CPA, I had to go to school. I didn't have a choice. And I knew that CPA credential would help me get to, you know, at least help me get to where I am today. Um, although, right, the CPA license is a dying thing. It's not really a, a buzzy or trendy thing anymore because nowadays you can do taxes without an actual credential. Um, so basically all that to say is you must enjoy what it is you're doing. And if you don't, then you have no business doing it. And so for me, I'm all about that, right? If, if there's no ability to take vacations after tax season, right? There's no ability to get eight hours of sleep every single night. And yes, there might be one or two nights that I might have to sacrifice. You know, which is okay as long as I'm getting the majority, as long as I'm watching my movies, my Netflix every single you know Saturday or Sunday night, I'm good, right? That that's all a part of the joy um, mission. Um, and joy ties directly to abundance because if you have abundance of joy, then you're probably going to live longer, and you'll be much more productive in everything that you do. I love it. Two questions for you: Is true success? true joy i would say so i mean in order to be successful at something truly successful at something you have to enjoy whatever it is that you did to attain that success i love it here's another whammy for you should every country every city and every company perhaps every household have a joy index i think so i think so I mean, just because it, I mean, it's so true that, and I understand some people are born in certain environments. I was born in Ghana, for example. And fortunate enough for me, I grew up around parents that actually had something. You know, they had, um, they were able to make something out of nothing. And then they were able to help me grow up and be in a good environment. Not everyone has that. Some kids are still, you know, their parents are out on the street, you know, uh, begging for money. Um, so they don't have, the, not that they don't have the resources per se, right? They have the resources. They just don't have any awareness of it because all they see is their parent basically holding a baby behind her back, carrying, you know, a huge load of oranges, apples. That's all they see. All they see is poverty. So when all you see is poverty, then you basically, your mind is trapped around that poverty. So you can't really enjoy life in a way because all you see is poverty. But when you cross over into the abundance world and it's like, wow, you know, I could have probably done something a little different. Maybe I could have sold some of those oranges and apples in order to help my parent live or be more abundant. I love that crossover from scarcity to abundance, a new That's abundant right. world. So oh, I could talk more. Well, one more quick question for you. So there's a lot of talk about happiness. Is joy something more than happiness? Is it a higher standard? Um, yeah, to be in joy. So there, there's a root word joy, which is a state of happiness. But to enjoy is to be in happiness forever. 
It is the consistent feeling of happiness. So happiness is a, it's a feeling. It's an emotion. It's like, hey, I'm happy now. Well, what about an hour from now? Right? When you're happy in that sense, you're only temporarily happy. But when you're enjoying what you're doing, you're happy forever. Wow. Wow. That's incredible. Kit number eight, grand, no, greatest <laughs> contribution. Yeah, so um, thanks, Rick. So I used to think that um, I have to have tons of money before I, I can give. But uh, giving is actually not just about making a donation or actually money is just a little part of it, you know? And um, so you don't have to give money. You can give, you can even give without any money involved. You can give, you know, advices. You can give supports to the one that need. You can give your time volunteering in your own community, or you can give uh, love, you know, love someone, love, give yourself some love, you know? and. Uh, support someone or give someone a chance or opportunity. That's it's all. Become, you know, rich before you can give that the opposite mindset that you want to have. That's a scarcity mindset that Jeff and Monique talk about, and, right? So because you think that you don't have enough to give. So, you know, at the, the greatest contribution that we all can do right away, it's start giving. So to me, it's, the sim it's simple. Give more, need less, equals more abundance. Wow. And I love this. We're, we're talking about solving abundance for humanity. So with 3 billion new minds connecting online, what contributions will they bring? Well, they can contribute to, you know, the infinite, you know, but they have to have the right mindset first. Otherwise, it's just they're just going to uh, keep everything for themselves. Like, I need this. I want this. I need this. Right. And then like, um, yeah. So if people have the right mindset, you know, and we all can do great things together. Wow. Thank you so much. Terry, can you talk to us about number nine magnitude 1000 plus? Magnitude 1000 plus. Well, a phrase comes to mind that uh, they say the wisest men in history will plant seeds from which trees will grow that they will probably never sit in the shade of. And I think that we have come from a very instant world. We want instant gratification. We want instant feedback on our performance. Um, it's very much about, you know, um, in this moment. But I think if we can rise high enough above it to realise that we are all essential intricate pieces to the future that we may never ever see but a conscious and intentional human can create a world that could be unbelievably magnificent for thousands of generations going forward wow so a quick question for you what is the true value in leaving or living to leave a lasting oh. legacy for 1,000 plus generations, that's a long time. What? I think when, I, I, I just think that when you step out of self, that's why exact purpose, and I know I keep going back to it, and the frustration I feel when companies think they get vision, vision is born out of exact purpose. And so at my age, I had become a little bit jaded until I did my exact purpose. And now... I hope that what I do lives forever because I'll never get to see it, but I think it's that beautiful thing about trust, trusting that every single thing we do somewhere. I'm, we're here today because of thousands of generations before. We have a planet based on other people's decisions that went before us. 
And so if we can take ownership of that and responsibility for what goes, what we're going to leave behind, um, who knows, we might come back and actually find out. Let's make sure we're proud when we come back. <laughs> so thinking about legacy for a thousand plus generations obviously is important and uh, has tremendous value, but, but what is the value in the short term? How does the, how does the long term improve the value of the oh, short term? The, the value of the long term, I think, because it, it and Kit has said this and we've all said it, is in the giving. You know, it is very much in the, because you cannot give to another without serving yourself. And so we actually grow abundantly ourselves. You know, we see parts of ourselves that we've never seen before. We, we get to contribute to others' lives. I think one of the greatest things, it's just so micro, but I've never felt more loved on this planet than actually handing a person living homeless $20 in my book. <laughs> I've got to throw the book in there. Um, and looking deeply in their eyes, the gratitude and love they pour back into me. I do it for me. So I think those moments create the, the bigger. Wow. I hope that answers it. Well, that's great. So we're solving abundance for humanity with these nine things. Again, you guys talked about exact purpose, grand challenges, grand solutions, circular life, circular org, pocket of genius, joy, greatest contribution, magnitude 1000 plus, but there's a plus one. There's, there's one more if and when, and to the degree we do these nine things, Monique, what, what can we expect as world leaders, as leaders of cities and companies and our homes, our lives? Mm, that's been so great. We will experience significance. And my purpose is to equip and empower men and women to live fully expressed with significance. And when we solve abundance for humanity, we will at last experience significance, each of us as individuals collectively. And then we will experience in our organization, our homes. You'll see it in the kids. We'll see it in cities. We'll see it in countries. But it all starts with that. And so these nine secrets to solving abundance for humanity enable us to solve abundance for everybody. And that's why abundance just isn't an economic uh, idea. We all have the resources, as it was said earlier. It's how we as individuals, as leaders, as countries, as a world, become geniuses fully expressed with significance, achieving abundance. And we believe that you can achieve abundance 20 years faster. Wow. You hear, you think when you, when we use the word abundance, we think about a lot of things, you know, as we've talked to people about this, this amazing word, this amazing concept, this amazing possibility. And I, I think a lot of people think of enormous wealth. They think a life of luxury, but I love how you're contrasting that with really, it's about a life of significance. And again, to the degree you, you do these other nine things. So this has just been incredible. I really, really appreciate your time today. And I think these nine design elements, shall we call them, essential elements to solving abundance for humanity will enable anyone, anyone to create an abundant economy for themselves. We can create a new abundant world and with these nine things. And not only has history shown it, not only has the last century shown it, but we see it day in and day out. We've seen it even through COVID the world over. So plan and play with these nine design elements and solve abundance for humanity with us. Thank you guys for your time today.